Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Lawrence Haddad, and I'm the Executive Director of the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition, or GAIN. GAIN, together with Jessica Fanzo and her team at Johns Hopkins University, and all the other partners you see here, are proud to show you around the new Food Systems Dashboard, hot off the presses. Now, the dashboard has been developed over the past three years in response to a felt need from a range of potential users, policymakers, businesses, international agencies, researchers, and civil society groups. They've all been scrabbling around for quality data to understand their food systems. So, working with our partners, we pulled in data for all countries from 30 different sources, public and private, and we identified and quality screened 170 indicators, organizing them by where they sit in the food system. The indicators are organized by whether they're in the food supply chains, food environments, individual factors, consumer behavior, diets, nutrition, other outcomes, or external drivers. The aim is to help stakeholders describe their food systems. What are the data telling them? Diagnose the, their food systems. Where are the worries? Where are the concerns? Where are the strengths? And then crucially to help them decide what to do, what actions to take to transform those systems. We're still developing the diagnose and decide functions with support from a number of key partners, including the Rockefeller Foundation, but there's more than enough to help users zero in on problems right now. For example, say you're a food policymaker in Bangladesh and you're trying to figure out what to do to increase the consumption of vegetables. And the dashboard tells you that the consumption of vegetables in your country is one third that of India's. It also shows you that prices are high. In fact, they're twice as high as they are in India. That should be a stimulus to production. But supply of vegetables in Bangladesh is half of India's. What's going on? Maybe it's vegetable losses that are high in the system. The dashboard data say no. You can see here, the vegetable losses are about 8%, which is not that high. Or perhaps it is that yields of vegetables are low. The dashboard data say yes, that's, that's a problem. Uh, vegetable yields in Bangladesh are much lower than they are in the rest of South Asia. So from a policy perspective, this points to, to growing practices and technology as places to start looking if the policymaker wants to improve vegetable consumption in Bangladesh. Now the dashboard also helps businesses trying to map emerging markets for healthy food potential. Say for example you want to know where are the physical transaction costs of doing business likely to be low? Well Kenya has a low score for the quality of agricultural infrastructure. That's quite surprising but perhaps even more surprisingly Ethiopia and Mozambique have scores that are almost double. Their infrastructure in agriculture is much better than in Kenya's. The cost of moving stuff around in their food systems is likely to be lower. So don't write off Ethiopia and Mozambique as places to do business, at least not on this count. How about if you're a business and you're worried about where is purchasing power going to be a big constraint to your ambition to introduce nutritious foods. You can see here, in India, the cost of a nutritionally adequate diet is half of what Indian families spend on average on food. So the potential is there to change behaviors without income growth. But in Ethiopia, the cost of a nutritionally adequate diet is more, much more than families spend on food. So here the business challenge is innovation to reduce cost. Well, let's say you're a business focused on the potential faithful consumer for life, also known as the adolescent. Where is the potential to capture adolescent market share with healthy foods? So first, where are, where are adolescents frequently consuming fast foods that could be turned into healthy foods? Well, the dashboard data say Thailand, three times a week adolescents in Thailand are purchasing fast food. 
Second, where are adolescent overweights, overweight rates high? Again, Thailand, 22% of children and adolescents are overweight in Thailand. And finally, where is the cost of a nutritious diet low relative to expenditures on food? Again, the data say Thailand. So here is a business opportunity for healthy fast food. High fast food consumption, high obesity levels, relatively low cost of nutritious foods, Thailand. Finally, we want one of the big users of the dashboard to be the 2021 UN Food System Summit stakeholders. Now the dashboard classifies all countries' food systems into one of five types, as you can see on this slide. And this kind of analytic work can really help support the summit's action tracks. And we all want to see the summit as the time when all the well-being indicators began to bend more sharply in the right direction. The dashboard can help. Please use it, share it, help us improve it, and most importantly, act on it. Thank you.